Welcome to Age of Noob everyone, and today we'll finally be able to take a deeper look at the Ottoman Janissaries. I know a lot of you have been waiting long for this, but I've had to do a ton of testing to be as comprehensive as possible, so it took a lot longer than usual. Also, most of the viewers watching aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you appreciate this type of in-depth content for Age of Empires 4, subscribing to the channel goes a long way for me. Thanks everyone. Alright, with that out of the way, ready your rifles and let's dive right in. As usual, let's begin with the stats. The Janissary has a base HP of 90, no armor whatsoever, and a movement speed of 1.12 tiles per second. They have a base ranged attack of 16 damage, and a further bonus damage of 16 against cavalry units. They do have a rather abysmal range of only 3.5 tiles, and are able to only shoot once every 1.75 seconds. For a cheap cost of 100 food and 350 gold, you can research the Elite Janissary upgrade in only 30 seconds. The upgrade increases both the base and bonus damage from 16 to 20 and adds an extra 15 health to their HP, increasing it to 105. Apart from the direct units upgrade, here's a comprehensive list of all further upgrades you can pick up for the Janissaries. Of course, you can pick up Siege Engineering and all other generic blacksmith upgrades, but you can also pick up the unique technology from the Archer range of Janissary guns for an extra plus 3 damage, and the typical chemistry technology from the University for a further 5 extra damage. Fully upgraded Janissaries have an HP of 105, can deal 28 damage per shot, and have 3 armor of both types through the blacksmith upgrades. That said, each Janissary will cost you 60 food and 100 gold in 24 seconds if produced to the Archer range. You can also technically train them for free through the military school, but you will need to put a Vizier point on the Advanced Academy technology in the Imperial Council and you will need to wait a whopping 1 minute and 47 seconds to train each one. Now, as you may know from the previous Ottoman Landmarks video I made, production speeds can be sped up through their Civilization bonus. Hence, if you have one blacksmith next to your Archer ranges, you can produce Janissaries in only 18 seconds instead, or 1 minute and 17 seconds from the military school. That said, if you opt to build the Istanbul Observatory Landmark to age up to the Imperial Age, then the training times reduce even further to only 15 seconds in the Archer range and 1 minute and 7 seconds in the military school. Here's a quick summary of the training time scenarios with the other range units that are available to the Ottomans, which are the Archers and the Crossbowmen. As you can see, crossbows and Janissaries are almost identical with only a few seconds worth of difference in training times. That said, it takes roughly 60% more time to train a Janissary compared to the Archers. Also, on top of everything we've covered so far, Janissaries have additional quirks that differentiate them from the generic units. First, they rock a cool hat and a mean mustache. But on a more serious note though, Janissaries take a whopping 50% more damage from ranged units and they have the ability to repair siege units at half the rate of villagers. These two points have big implications on how and why you'd field these elite units on the battlefield and we'll include them in the analysis in the upcoming sections. For now, let's take a closer look at how they fare against every single land military unit to gauge their place in the game. Okay, let's begin with infantry units first, starting with the melee ones. Against the Spearmen, the Janissaries don't fare too well. The issue is twofold. The Spearman is faster than the Janissary and will be able to chase him down even with Micro, and they are twice as cheap. It becomes a numbers thing, as you can throw your Spearman into the Janissaries with zero care and look elsewhere. Obviously, it's a different story if the Ottoman player has archers mixed in, so only engage if you've caught off a group of Janissaries and have a numbers advantage. Hence, in equal numbers, the Janissaries can win with Micro if you have above the critical mass, but once they do get outnumbered, they cannot retreat and will be forced to take an engagement that is not cost or gold effective. Against the Donsos, the Janissaries don't do that well overall either. First of all, you have to micro your units or you will lose heavily. And even if you spend all your attention microing down the Donsos, you'll eventually lose your critical mass of one shot one kill and lose the engagement. Now, in equal numbers after the first range attack of the Donsos are down, you can still kite and thin down some of the Donso numbers. That said, try to avoid lengthy engagements against them. Remember, Donsos are cheaper and easier to mass with no micro required from your opponent. Against the Man at Arms, the Janissaries overall fare poorly against them without a meat shield. Even with all the heavy armor, the Man at Arms have the same movement speed as the Janissaries, which makes kiting very difficult. First of all, you will need a ball of roughly 16 Janissaries or so to one-shot a Man at Arm depending on upgrades, so you'll need about 20 to 25 to consistently one-shot them once you account for some losses. Second, just like the others, your opponent will attack move and look elsewhere while you have to have god tier micro and likely have to dual control group. At the very best case in high numbers, you might break even in equal numbers after paying all your attention on the engagement. Hence, the Janissaries will mostly struggle and will have to retreat if they don't have a frontline against the Man-at-Arms and their variants. 
Against the Landsknechts, the engagement depends on the micro and formation. Assuming that marching drills is researched to give the Landsknechts the extra speed, they can quickly close down the gap and hit their AoE damage. Even with micro, you'll still lose this engagement very badly. That said, if you use the staggered formation as you should against the Landsknechts, the difference is night and day. The first attack will likely be struck against one unlucky Janissary, but you'll eventually clean up every single enemy in it. Overall, with some decent micro and proper formation, you can deal with the Landsknechts if you're paying close attention. Now that we've covered the melee infantry units, let's now explore the ranged ones. Against archers, the Janissaries unsurprisingly do awfully. Archers are the quintessential counter unit to the Janissaries as they are cheaper, available at an earlier age, train quicker, and are easier to mass than the Janissaries. Unless you heavily outnumber enemy archers, simply do not take this engagement. Against the longbows, the Janissaries do awfully as well. This matchup is also one of the worst you can take as longbows have twice their range. Janissaries unsurprisingly lose in both equal resources and equal numbers as the bonus damage they take coupled with the longbows extra range is too much for them to handle. A similar story is of course the case with the Chukunus as well. In equal numbers or in equal resources, the Janissaries lose against them. And just like the other archer type units, this engagement should be avoided for the Ottomans. Against the crossbows, it's not much different as you can kind of put together a pattern now. Be it in equal resources or numbers, they're always outmatched by the crossbows. Hence, just like the others, unless you heavily outnumber the crossbows, don't take this engagement. This engagement is basically identical against the French Arbalest as well, so keep that in mind. Against the Malian Javelin Throwers, the Janissaries unsurprisingly get destroyed as well as they get two bonus damages applied against them. In equal numbers or resources, almost always avoid engaging against the Javelin Throwers if you have to keep your Janissaries alive. Against the Hand Cannoneers, the Janissaries win in equal resources. When both of these units have full upgrades, the Janissaries do even better. That said, they still lose in equal numbers, so as long as you outnumber the enemy Hand Cannoneers, it should be a good engagement to take. Against the Rooster Letzi, the Janissaries cannot hold their own. The Janissaries are slightly cheaper, but the small numbers advantage doesn't matter here. Even if you start the engagement without the Strelatsi's stationary bonus, the Janissaries lose in both equal numbers and equal resources. That's a bad engagement to take. Against the Musafari Gunners on the other hand, it depends. In equal resources, the Janissaries win comfortably, as the Musafari Gunners are far more expensive. In equal numbers, however, the Musafari Gunners win. Hence, as long as you pay close attention and aren't caught by surprise, you can comfortably take the engagement as long as you maintain a numbers advantage over your Malian opponent. And finally, against the Chinese Grenadiers, the engagement type matters a lot. If you don't stagger your units, you will get obviously demolished even in equal resources as the Janissaries. If you spread your units, the engagement is not even close, as it's an easy win for the Janissaries. In equal numbers and in staggered formation, the healing bonus of the Chinese prove a tad too much, but the engagement is too close that I could call it a stalemate. In other words, unless you clump up your Janissaries, you can always take an engagement against the Grenadiers when you have a numbers advantage yourself. And it's still okay to engage in equal numbers since massing your Janissaries is easier. That was it for all infantry units in the game. Let's now explore how they do against the units they do bonus damage against, which are the cavalry units, so let's start with the melee ones. Against the scouts, well, let's just say it went as expected. It was so bad that midway through the test I asked myself why was I even bothering with micro. Easily one of the most one-sided matchups in any conceivable scenario. Never use scouts against Janissaries. Against the Horsemen, the Janissaries showcase their strong bonus. Despite not having any frontline support, even a small bowl of Janissaries easily deal with the Horsemen with a bit of micro and equal resources. Heck, I even tried no micro at all, and even though you will lose more Janissaries than before, you still win the engagement. Hence, equal resources or equal numbers, with or without micro, Janissaries win against the Horsemen all the time. If the enemy Janissaries have some frontline to begin with, you'll be sending your Horsemen to a suicide mission. That said, against the knights, it's a mixed bag. In equal resources, even after taking a full charge attack to the face, the Janissaries comfortably win the engagement with more than half surviving the battle. In equal numbers, it's not the case, because as soon as you lose a critical mass of one shot, one kill, the engagement quickly snowballs into the knight's favor. Regardless, this is not how most of your engagements will go in a real game. If any other unit absorbs the charge attack, the knights are toast. Overall, Janissaries are still very deadly against the knights, and they're always cost-effective to trade as long as they're not outnumbered. Just like the horsemen, any melee support for the Janissaries means a suicide order for the knights. The story is similar against the camel rider. In equal resources and even with zero micro, the Janissaries can comfortably take the engagement and win with some healthy units still standing. If we do equal numbers, then the camel riders win, even if you micro your Janissaries. Same idea applies here. Unless you're outnumbered, definitely don't be afraid to engage against the camel riders, even if you don't have a front line to soak up the damage. That said, against the Sofas, the Janissaries take their first main loss against the Cavalry unit. This is because the Sofa Horsemen are cheap compared to the stats they have, as they are close to the Knights but cost almost as much as a Janissary. 
even if you have a critical mass and godly micro, you'll barely break even with the Sofa Horseman and it will take all of your attention. Now, this obviously doesn't mean that the Janissaries are bad against them, you just need a few melee units in the front to soak up the charge attack and you should still be able to clean them up. In other words, you can't be as nonchalant with your Janissaries against the Malian Sofas compared to the other cavalry units. If you're playing a mirror matchup and are up against the Ottoman Sipahis, then the engagement is barely winnable with some unrealistic level of micro. I ran the test twice, once with and once without activating the Sipahis Fortitude ability, and the result was very similar. You will have to one-shot one kill micro until you lose your critical mass, and then stagger your shots and units around to finish off the rest of the Sipahis and barely survive with a few Janissaries remaining. This level of micro is not realistic in a game, so just like the sofas, you shouldn't be nonchalant around the Sipahis either. Have a few frontliners and you'll be fine, but if you are ever caught out, you'll either have to be on point with your micro or you'll lose all of your Janissaries for sure. Against the Chinese Fire Lancers, you'll have a very bad time. In compact or staggered formation, the AoE burst damage is simply too much for the Janissaries to handle, and you'll always lose the engagement no matter the micro or formation. Basically, if you're caught, you're toast, so you'll definitely need spears in the front to stop the charged attack. For the Janissaries, the Fire Lancers are pretty much the only cavalry units in the game in which engaging against them alone is never an option. Against the War Elephants, it's a comical engagement that should be obvious which way it will go. You will definitely need to kite and micro your Janissaries, but you shouldn't lose more than a few before bringing down all of the Elephants. As a Delhi player, having more Elephants as a meat shield in your composition against the Ottoman Janissaries is a bad idea. The final type of units remaining are the ranged cavalry units, so let's wrap it up with those. Against the Rus Horse Archers, the Janissaries do win the engagement in the Castle Age with equal resources and of course in equal numbers as well. This engagement ends very quickly due to the both units dealing bonus damage against one another. That said, fully upgrading both of these units in the Imperial Age tips the engagement in the favor of the Horse Archers. Hence, although not ideal, you can deal with the Horse Archers reasonably well in the mid game with your Janissaries, but you should avoid this engagement as the game goes late. Hence, make sure to mix in Archers to deal with enemy horse archers instead. Against the Abbasid Camel Archers on the other hand, it's not even close. Since the Camel Archers are very expensive, the Janissaries demolish the Camel Archers in equal resources. Of course, since the Camel Archer is a stronger unit overall, it wins instead in the equal numbers matchup. Regardless, the Camel Archers are so expensive that you should be comfortable taking this engagement with your Janissaries head on if you're not heavily outnumbered. Moving on to the other ranged cavalry unit, the Janissaries lose against the Mangadai. Since they cost the same amount of resources, the Janissaries no longer have a numbers advantage and lose the fight. They also cannot run away from the Mangadai, so unless you have your own archers mixed in, you'll have a bad time against the Mangadai on open fields. And finally, against the Tower Elephants, you will need to micro your Janissaries just like the previous Elephants, but it should still be a comfortable engagement to take. The Elephants are too slow to close the gap consistently, and the sheer numbers advantage works in the favor of the Janissaries to bring down the Elephants quickly. Now, as a final note, there's not much point in testing against siege units as those are engagements that aren't meant to occur in the game. The exception, of course, are the Mangonels. Just like almost every other low to medium damage infantry range unit, the Mangonels will fare well against the Janissaries. You'll need to mostly avoid this engagement where you can, and if you absolutely must stand your ground, then be sure to stagger your units, of course. Remember that you can still technically micro and dodge the projectiles, but overall, it's an engagement you want to avoid. Okay, so that was a lot of information. Let's summarize everything we've learned so far in a neat table, then jump into the rules of thumb for engagements. As you can see from roughly the colors alone, the Janissaries overall don't do well against infantry, but excel at engaging against cavalry units. Pause the video here if you want to take a detailed look. If you still feel like this is too much for you to remember, here are some easy to remember rules of thumb. Regarding ranged infantry units, the only units you might win against are the late game gunpowder units of hand cannoneers, musafari gunners, and the grenadiers when staggered. Every other ranged infantry unit still demolishes you in equal resources and even in equal numbers. Regarding melee infantry units, you mostly lose these as well, even with a bit of micro. The only exception here are the Lanzknechts, in which staggered formation and micro wins you the engagement. Every other unit will eventually run you down once you lose your critical mass. You definitely need to have a frontline to ensure you don't lose your Janissaries. Regarding melee cavalry units, you easily win against every single one of them in equal resources with the exception of the Sofas, the Fire Lancers, and potentially a stalemate against the Sipahis. That said, there are still fantastic units against those as well, but it's just that the Janissaries need some form of frontline, ideally spears, in front of them to deal with those as well. And finally, regarding ranged cavalry units, you also demolish every one of them with the exception of the Mangadai in equal resources. Against the Mangadai and technically against the late game horse archer and camel archer in equal numbers, you'll need to mix in your own Ottoman archers to deal with them instead.
In summary, the Janissaries are actually very powerful units that the Ottomans have at their disposal. Do remember that they also have the ability to repair siege units as well on top of their great combat ability. Hence, they are very strong if you are able to cover their three main weaknesses. Infantry, Mangonels and niche unique cavalry. Enemy Mangonels can be dealt with Springles. Enemy infantry can be dealt with either archers, crossbows or any form of frontliners. Mangonites can be dealt with your archers and niche cavalry can be dealt with your spears. Hence, be sure to scout your enemy and react to their composition. You'll then need to field these support units alongside your Janissaries to win the battle. As a final note, Age of Empires 4 is obviously a very complex game with a million different parameters, as circumstances change based on your matchup, map, playstyle and much more. This video should serve to showcase the raw power of the Janissary and highlight their strengths and weaknesses. So it's up to you to use your game sense to decide when and how to field them with which of the support units you have available for the Ottomans. Well, that's all you need to know about the Ottoman Janissaries in Age of Empires 4. This video took a massive amount of time to put together, so if you've enjoyed this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on future videos. I will be away from my PC for a few weeks starting tomorrow, but I will be back with more videos to be published around the holiday season for you folks. As always, thanks for watching everyone, make sure you take the correct engagements with your Janissaries, and see you all in the next one.